Right now you should be. Now you should see. Uh, now you should see it, right? Gabe, Gabriel. All right, so top left picture, high precision, high accuracy, top right. Oh, sorry, top right, high precision, high accuracy. Top left, only precise. Uh, bottom left is very bad. Not only you know, are you off the target, but every single measurement is all over the place. Uh, bottom right is a little better. Uh, you know, you're close to the target, you're close to the bullseye, but each each measurement is not close to each other. All right. Uh, next up. So don't don't start writing everything. We want to summarize, summarize, summarize. What is sig fig? Significant figures is a way to account for the error in an instrument. So when you're when you're making measurements, you're going to be using all sorts of um, instruments, right? You use a stopwatch to measure time, a, a ruler or something to measure distance, and each instrument has its own level of error. The stopwatch goes out to the tenths place, let's say, and and the and the ruler goes out to the millimeters and so on. So so when you're using physics formulas, you're going to need to combine different measurements when you plug in the values into your physics formulas. But if each instrument gives you a different amount of error or ability or ability to get close to the you know bullseye, then then we have to have a systematic approach to rounding our numbers. And so that's why we have sig figs. It's a it's a concept to round numbers. So what do you write? Sig figs allow us to round numbers. Um, it reports the precision of instruments. So I would write the second bullet, and then I would summarize the concept of you know it allows us to round numbers based on the error of the instrument. Okay, so why are we doing notes this way? So the reason why we want to do notes this way is that it develops our critical thinking skills. In order for you to understand the concept, when you are thinking about how to summarize, right, it will help you remember the concept even more instead of trying to memorize all the words that I have typed up. Okay, so this is why I try to transition away from PowerPoints as much as possible, because when you put up a PowerPoint, uh, for the most part, students are just, you know, instead of listening and instead of thinking, and instead of using, uh, you know, instead of you know, turning that cogwheel in their brains, they're just blindly writing stuff down and then, yeah, I'll just read it later on and learn it on my own later on. So it's important to be attentive and it's important to try to summarize everything as much as possible. Write it in your own words. That's how you will learn the content. Sound good? OK, can someone type in chat what they wrote down for the summary concept part? What makes a sig fig? What did you write? Share, please. Yeah, just so you know, when you participate and you share or ask thoughtful questions and stuff that are, pertains to the lesson, I do give extra credit um, at the end of the, like let's say, usually at the end of the grading period. So like every quarter, every 10 weeks, there will be like a little participation extra credit column. And it's gonna be based on, you know, people participating, asking really good questions. Uh, Etc. Beyond beyond the class flow and all that stuff. So, for example, Christopher just wrote, uh, "Sig figs allow us to round numbers based on the error of the instrument." Excellent, Chris. So that's all I wanted. Um, so things like that. Number of sig figs implies errors. Good. Uh, hi, Mr. Zahir. I am here, but my internet was down. Okay. Good. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So so just so you know, um, if you're if you're having difficulty connecting, especially with like Global Protect or something like that on your on your on your computer, like try to um, if you can, of course, uh, try to like log in through your phone using the app, just so you know the attendance part is taken care of, and then continue to try to fix your computer, right? So that way, you know, that way you're here, you're logged in, and all that stuff. Yeah, at least you can hear me through your phone as you're trying to fix your computer. Good, good. All right, let's move on to actual rules. Here you're going to write down, how do we count them? So uh, let's write this down. Rule number one, non-zero. So you're writing this down, rule number one, non-zero. And you're also writing this stuff down. 
all non-zero numbers and zeros between non-zero numbers, which are sandwiched, we call it the sandwich rule, are significant. So sig figs, so when we're doing sig figs, the, the first three rules is how to count the numbers. And then rule number four will focus on how to actually round sig figs. So that's the part that we really want to get to, rule number four, uh, by the end of the day, by the end of this lecture. Class ends at 10.20, by the way, 10.20. We have an 80-minute block, and I don't see you tomorrow. But remember, uh, tomorrow... Let's see, can we, can we abbreviate? Um, yes, you can abbreviate as long as it makes sense. So I, for example, as long as uh, it's, um, what I mean by this sense is that as long as it's a, a consistent abbreviation among you know, standard note taking. So uh, for example, we use s dot f dot for sig figs. So if you want to use s dot s dot f, uh, s dot f dot, uh, instead of writing out sig fig, that's also fine. Can you share your screen? It is being shared, isn't it? Can you guys see the uh, PowerPoint? Type in chat if you can see. Yeah, uh, I believe it is shared. For some reason, I don't see it. You may have to actually click on the um, the meeting video. It might be a little tiny window or something. Yeah, so uh, all right, so let's get back to the rule. The rule is for non-zeros. Um, any non-zero number counts, so let's see. Oops. Go back. So we know non-zero, rule for non-zero. So for example, this, this seven, oops, there we go. This seven, 79.3 degrees Celsius. Now, of course, we don't worry about the units. You can just ignore the units. You're just looking at the values, the numbers, and so count non-digits, uh, non-zero, I mean, uh, any number between one and nine. So this seven, this nine, this three, these are all non-zero numbers. They count, so that's one, two, three. So we say this is three sig figs, three SF. So it's as easy as that. Uh, are those examples at the bottom? Yes, they are examples at the bottom, and we're going to uh, do them right now. Uh, 105, 105, 105 centimeters. Okay, and uh, let's pull it up on class flow now. I'm actually for the next two. Don't type it in yet, as well as 80,000. $305. So in class law, I'll do a text entry. Oh, I got logged out. Whoops. Uh, so now on class law, you should see you should see the two numbers, right? So I want two two entries, two numbers. The first number, comma, the second number. So, so let's use this rule. We're, we're counting digits, right? Any number that is a non-zero number counts. So you start like with one and five, okay? And then, and then the sandwich rule. Think about the sandwich rule. If a zero is between, if a zero is between non-zero numbers, then it counts. Okay. All right. We're getting a bunch of answers. Uh, Emilio, Stephanie, Gwen. Daniela, Luke, Jasmine. If you took chem, this is basically a review from chem, so you have an advantage there. Um, if you, you know, if you're coming from biology, uh, you know, you might need to do a little bit more practice than everyone else from chem, and that's okay. I do have office hours today, right? From 150 to 250. Please come by the office hours uh, if you have questions. Go ahead, review the power, um, PowerPoint here, and then on zphysics.net there are additional links. Uh, uh, additional links uh, so you can practice some more. Uh, Jason asks, could you explain, re-explain again? Yeah. So rule number one is is the non-zero rule. So you count numbers, you count them as uh, significant uh, as significant numbers if they are between one and nine. Okay. So the one and the five they count. That's two numbers already. And 
you also count zeros that are sandwiched in between numbers. So, so I guess I'll give it, give the first one away. Um, so this zero that is in between the one and the five, this one counts also. So this answer is three sig figs. All right. Um, we're still waiting on 19 responses, <laughs> 18 responses. So please type something in. Um, so for class flow. Could you re explain? Oh, uh, on Glasslow, you just write the answer um, similar to how you see the blanks, fill in the blanks. It's the first one, comma, and then the second one. So the first blank is the 105, uh, and then the, uh, the second blank is for the, uh, the 80,305. What is class? Oh, Emily. Oh, yeah, Emily. Uh, we're going to classflow.com slash student. And then type in QGX7X. Um, that is the code. And this allows us to um, kind of participate in class. It's like a dynamic question asking, answering platform. Okay. All right. So, yes. And so we have three, three, and five. So the last one is five. So you can see how how both the zeros are in between. They're sandwiched in between, so so they count. All right. Rule number two. Rule number two is zeros in the front, also called preceding zeros. Preceding zeros are never significant. Are never significant. So definitely write all of this down. And, and and Emily, uh, just make sure you use your name um, and then at least the initial of your last name. So like Emily and then R dot. Um, okay. All right, so preceding zeros are never significant. Um, so, so this 0 0.05 grams, okay? These numbers, in the, these zeros in the front don't count. There's only one of them. The five is a non-zero number, so this is just uh, one sig fig. Yeah. Um, so similarly, all these zeros in the front of the second one. Okay. Again, this is this is called significant digits. Yes. Um, you know, it might seem like wait, this is measuring. You know, down to a, a more uh, a more smaller, uh, more smaller, uh, a much smaller um, you know metric prefix or whatever it is, but significant digits deal with error. Remember, it, it has nothing to do with you know what metric prefix you're measuring really. So why is why why is the real question? Why don't these zeros count? Uh, these are called placeholders. Basically, the only thing, the only information you get out of these zeros is that, is that, you know, this three is into the, you know, uh, uh, well, Mr. Zahur, my internet wasn't working, so I left and I joined on my phone. Uh, yes, Tradesh, uh, please continue to try to log back in through your, uh, through your computer, but yes, uh, you may, as a backup, you may use your phone, but please continue to try to log back in with your laptop. Thank you. Um, so they don't count, they're in the front. Um, so this is again, just one sig fig. Oops. One sig fig. Okay. Uh, whoa, I have stuff in the back. <laughs> Let me delete all that. Uh, I'm just deleting some stuff on my on my OneNote. Hang on tight. Okay, I am ready. So so let's try the last one. Go ahead and type in chat for me. The last example. How many sig figs? 
Uh oh, baby's crying. BRB. Okay, back. All right, excellent. Everyone got three. Good job. So that's just counting numbers. Uh, you know, the front ones don't count, etc. So one, one, three. Let's take a look at rule number three. So the first rule, first two rules are pretty, pretty self-explanatory. But this third rule is where it starts to get tricky because you need to now combine all the other rules. The rules don't work independently; they work together, all at once, just like physics, right? Uh, all the rules you learn, every single unit, as you learn more and more rules and laws, they all work together. Um, so rule number three, part one, when a decimal and zeros follow a non-zero number, all are significant. So definitely write all this down. Okay. So zeros in back. And that's the rule and the conditions that there are you know, conditions here. Let's see. Starting with, let's see, how am I going to do this? Let me move it over to the other side. Here we go. Uh, so let's start with the thousand bucks. One thousand dollars. Is anything supposed to show up on class flow? All I see is pictures. No. So when I when I close the question, yeah, um, you're just seeing backgrounds and images. But when I pose a question and, and then it's activated, then you'll see the question on your screen. So I, I will um, in class um, in Teams, I know I'll, I'll tell you. Okay, let's go to class flow, answer this question, and then we'll come back. We'll kind of juggle back and forth between them. So when there's no question asked, then it's just blank with backgrounds. All right, so thousand bucks. So again, the uh, the first thing you want to do is check if there is a decimal point. So is there a decimal point? Yes, there is a decimal point. Um, and then next, you check are these zeros, you know, are these zeros coming after a non-zero number? So you can see how every single zero is after this one here. One is a non-zero number. And then all of a sudden, this rule applies. So now all of it is significant. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six sig figs. Okay. All right, I'm going to ask you a, ask you a question now. On class though, it's going to be a true or false. Uh, true or false question. Um, and you have to read it carefully. And it pertains to the second uh, the second example, this uh, the kilometers one. So it pertains to the uh, second one here. OK? Uh, and the question is, it's a true false. True, I mean, uh, oh, I guess I could do yes, no. Uh, I'm going to do a yes, no. A happy face, yes. Sad face, no. Does the fact that the last zero this zero here, uh, the last zero comes after the seven, make it a sig fig. Does this fact make it a sig fig? So you got to be careful. Make sure you read the question. It could be a trick question. I don't know. Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, I was saying, uh, please use it. Uh, use Classflow because otherwise it'll just. Uh, I can't keep track. So we got a bunch of yeses and nos. Hmm. Hmm. Is it a trick question? 
It is not supported. Do we need to copy what's written on class to our notes? Nah. Nah. It's just participation. Uh, you want to treat class just like uh, I would ask, you know, questions in class. You know, let's say we're taking notes and stuff, and I'll just ask questions. You know, uh, ask the whole class type of thing. So, uh, if you want, I mean, no one's stopping you, right? You can just copy paste if you want, but uh, I want to, you know, make it as efficient as possible. It's just the most important part is for you to think, think about these things. The more thinking you do. The more you know, uh, the better it is, because the more you know neural connections you're making in your brain, the more growth you will have over the course of this class. All right, I'm going to stop it because obviously you know, uh, eventually we got to stop it, right? Now remember, you get to change your answer until I do hit the stop button. Do portrait mode, not landscape mode, if that is what it this is. Well, thank you, Jason, for helping out. Um, If you're on your phone, yeah. Oh. Are you on class flow on your phone? Is that is that what's going on? Yeah. And then there's also this effect where or once once I show results like this, and then you see, wait, more people are saying yes. Let me go change my answer to yes. Don't don't worry about what what other people are are, are doing, right? Again, you don't get credit based on getting a right or wrong. The most important part is that you made the conclusion based on your own analysis. OK, what other people did does not help you at this point. So. So. Let me go and stop it. The answer is no. Now, here's why. It is true that this zero that we're talking about is a significant digit. But it is not true solely based on what the question was asking. So this is this is uh, this is the reason why I asked this question. In order for rule number three to work, you have to have both conditions apply at the same time. Okay, both conditions meaning not only does this zero have to come after the seven, but we also have to have a decimal point in the number. So the fact that there is a decimal point and that it comes after the seven makes it significant. Yeah, it was a trick question, I know. Uh, but you know, the point was that uh, you want to apply both conditions at the same time in order for this rule to work. So saying the fact that rule three is true implied solely. Uh, eat. Eden, I believe it's Eden. I watched your video and you said it was Eden. I called you Eden yesterday. You should have corrected me. <laughs> uh, Eden says, so you're saying the fact that rule three is true implied solely rule three. Uh, now let me rephrase what I was saying. I was saying that uh, what I asked on what I asked on class flow was only you know half of rule three, and half of rule three does not make it significant. Right. Uh, what makes it significant is the entirety of rule three. Right, right, correct. Half of rule three, meaning what is half of rule three? So here's rule three. Rule three says when a decimal and zeros follow a non-zero number. So these are like two parts of rule three. Not only does the zero have to follow a non-zero number, but there also has to be a decimal point in the number. So those are two conditions, two things, two halves, and both halves have to be true in order for it to be significant. All right, so let's go ahead and try. Uh, so so what is the answer for for the second one? This uh, the answer for the second one. Uh, take a look at the the zeros in the front, right? This was this was uh, rule number two. Uh, the decimal could be anywhere, really. Um, anywhere in the number. But in order for the zero to count, it has to come after a non-zero. Mm -hmm. So let's take a look at number two here, three, five, seven, zero. So notice how 
of course, the three, five, and the seven count. Let's get that out of the way. But notice how these zeros in the front do not count because yes, they have, yes, there is a decimal point, but these zeros do not follow a non-zero, Jason, right? Whereas this one counts. This one counts because yes, there's a decimal and it comes after the seven. So the answer here is four sig figs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and the other rules that we've learned, even rule number one, can also you know uh, work with rule number three, and and multiple rules can be true at the same time. So that's why we have the third example. In the third example, you can see how these zeros after the two, of course, they come after the two, and there's a decimal point. They count. Uh, you could also apply the sandwich rule here. So even rule number one works. These zeros are sandwiched in between, so of course they count. And then these zeros at the end, even though they're they're trailing zeros, but um, these zeros come after the five, and there's a decimal point in the number. So that means they also count. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, six sig figs. Uh, all right, and here's the other part. When you don't have a decimal, what do you do? So let me move that. Yeah, and Emily, uh, since you came in late, remember you can always uh, download the PowerPoint. Um, there's a link on Canvas to the Unit 1 notes, or you can go directly to our website, zphysics.net, and find it through Unit 1, OK? Uh, all right, trailing zeros without a decimal are not significant unless indicated by a line. So the line is kind of our our backup plan. Uh, so if for the last one, we only applied the third rule, would that still make all of them significant? Uh, yes, because the last rule uh, in the last one, um, every all the zeros come after non-zero numbers and, and there is a decimal. So just by rule three alone, assuming you, know, you use both parts of it, both halves, uh, makes everything significant, yes. All right, so trailing zeros without without a decimal are not significant. So let's let's take a look at the first one here. One, actually, what is that number? One hundred thousand and fifty. One hundred thousand and fifty. OK, yeah, and, and of course, uh, make sure you put units and stuff. We, we love units in physics. OK, so this zero at the end, does it count? Well, it does come after a five. Brian says no. Brian, go ahead and answer. You can unmute your mic if you want. Why no, Brian? Uh, because um, it, even though it's at the end and follows a non-zero, there's no decimal. Very good. Yep. So since there's no decimal, it doesn't count. All right. Let's do a follow-up. How about these ones? Do they count? Uh, you can also use. Mr. Zahur, you muted yourself, I think. Darn it. Thank you. Gabriel. <laughs> oh, well, Gabriel put his hand on someone else. Oh. Someone else. Yeah, let's use. Let's hear some more voices. Tanak, go ahead. How about these zeros in the middle? Um, the zeros would count because they're in between a non-zero number. There we go. All right, so we got our sandwich rule from rule number one. So again, these rules work together, so, so apply whichever one you can. So, so the one counts, the five counts, of, of course. These zeros, these zeros in the middle count because they're sandwiched in between. The last one does not. So we have one, two, three, four, five. All right. Uh, next up. 
57,000. These are all trailing zeros. Trailing zeros, no decimal point. They don't count, even though it comes after the seven, there's no decimal point, it's just two. All right, now we get to something different. Ooh, what is this underline thing? Okay, what if I did not have this underline? How many sig figs do I have? Yes, very good. Stephanie, we got Tanak, Brian, Ta whoa, it's coming in, flowing. Very good. This is what what well, this is what it feels like to be like a Twitch streamer, where you get like Twitch spam. <laughs> we got our authentic Twitch chat in here. Yeah. So without without the line, you have one sig fig. Um, now, if I put a line here, the line makes it significant. So it turns a zero and makes it like if it was uh, a non-zero number. Uh, yes, Emily, handwritten notes are okay. You just have to take pictures of it and then upload it eventually into OneNote before the test day. Uh, very good, Brian. So now that this underlined zero is like a non-zero number, the sandwich rule applies for this for this first zero. Therefore, this is three sig figs. OK, now now if I had underlining the first zero, oops, a little smudge. There we go. If I put the underline in the first zero, OK, this would be only two. Correct. Um, that's because, you know, this zero is now significant, but there's still no there's no low decimal point. Right. So. Um, So, so the other ones don't count. There is another way. Um, this one is not used as much. So uh, let's say you put 1,000 dot and nothing after the dot. This is a this is a very an older technique in the older textbooks. So I know who knows if you go to college and you have a really old professor uh, who's probably using his own book. <laughs> then they might use this method. When you put a dot, it's almost like underlining the last zero. And as, as Justin pointed out, um, it, it makes it four. Uh, we, we won't, you may not see this in, in this class as much. Um, uh, all right, so, so this dot again is like, is the same as is equivalent to having it this way. Now, the other way you you can you can do this is to use scientific notation. So 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 you can kind of get around using underlines and decimals. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, could you please explain the decimal point again? Yeah, the decimal point is like underlining the last zero. Why would a zero be underlined to begin with? Ah, asking the real questions. Why even underline a zero and make it significant? Well, this goes into rule number four, a great segue. Um, here are the answers, blah, blah, blah. So rule number four is operations, okay? So as you're writing this down, I will explain. Uh, so as I was trying to say at the start, the whole reason why we use sig figs is because when we're using formulas, we are combining different instruments that have different levels of error, different you know um, strengths, if you will. Okay, so in order to account for that error, the error of the measurement, uh, when we do operations, we choose the least amount of sig fig in the problem. Okay. That way, when you combine a more accurate measuring tool with a less accurate measuring tool, your final answer will be based on the less accurate tool because your overall answer is, is dependent on that less accurate tool. Okay. So, so in your final answer, sometimes you might get a thousand, but when you used values, your original values had more significant digits. So now you have to change 
that 1000 into a three sig fig number. And so these are different ways to do that. So that's why we have this underlying thing in scientific notation and dots and stuff. So again, it has everything to do with rule number four. So here's rule number four. Uh, for rule number four, you do the operation and then you have to round to the least number of sig figs in the problem. So let me pull out a calculator and go ahead and do that for yourself. Um, yes, you can use your computer calculator for now, or you can even use your phone if you want uh, for now. But if you do have a scientific calculator, please use that instead, just so you're used to it. Um, right? Uh, when we go back to school, et cetera, you know, you definitely use a, a physical calculator. Um, I do have like a couple to kind of let people borrow, but I would uh, highly recommend getting a scientific calculator so that you're used to, you know, using your own if you can at least. Uh, so, so again, let's try the first one together. 21.3 G, which is grams, times 1.3. So 21.3 times 1.3. You do the operation and you get a bunch of numbers, but you can't answer it with this value. Okay. The next thing you do is you go back to the problem. Going, going back to the problem. Okay. All right. So in the problem, we have two numbers: a twenty-one point three and a uh, and a one point three. So in the problem, I count how many sig figs there are in each number. So how many how many sig figs is 21.3? Well, these are all non-zero numbers. So that's one, two, three. So this is three sig figs. All right. And then we look at the next number. This is one, two, two sig figs. Okay. So based on this problem, your final answer must be based on the less accurate measurement. So meaning when I give an answer to this problem, I have to round my answer to two sig figs because it's the smaller one. So what was the answer? The answer was 27.69. And I have to round this number. Rounding works just like regular rounding. So you start from left to right for sig figs. So start from left to right. Two, that's one sig fig. Uh, Thomas Holloway, yeah, that's rule. That's the next one, rule number five. Hang on, uh, you're, you're a little ahead of us. So we're doing operation, and as you can see, it's a multiplication and division. Uh, so, so you start from left to right. Um, so two, that's one sig fig. Seven, that's two sig figs. So again, we're trying to count to two. We want the answer to be in two sig figs, but you can't stop there. Because we're doing two sig figs, we have, just like regular rounding, we have to look at the third one, the next one over. If it's five or above, you round up. If it's less than five, you round down. Okay, so that's one, that's two. We look at the six. The six tells us to round up. That turns the seven into an eight. So the final answer is 28. But we can't just say 28. We also have to account for the units. And similar to what you did with the numbers, you do the same thing with the units as well. So we have G times G. What's G times G? It's kind of like X times X. What's X times X? G times G is G squared. Yep. Very good. All right. Let's try. Let's do the next one. Five. M slash S. What's M slash S? No hands. Nothing. M slash S. Or anytime you see a slash, you can you can actually write it as a fraction meters per second. Yes. That's measuring my speed here. Um, meters per second, m slash s, means it's meters in the numerator and then seconds in the denominator. Um, and then we're multiplying 25 s, which is just seconds. Again, you know, of course you can multiply 
if you just multiply, you get 125. You know, 5, 20, uh, 5 times 25 is 125. But we have to round our answer. Uh, so take a look at the problem. How many sig figs is 5? Oops. <laughs> How many sig figs is? Oh, that's just one sig fig. Um, and then the other one is two sig fig. We have to choose the smaller one. So how do I get 125 and round it to one sig fig? So again, start from the left side. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Uh, no problem, Jason. Uh, so you start from the left side, one. Okay, then we have to look at the next one over. Two. Two tells me to round down. I have to round down. When you round down, the two turns into a zero, so that becomes 100, not 10. Well, there's a huge difference between 10 and 100. Uh, you have to stay within the same magnitude. Uh, it's just like once you round down, everything else that follows turns into a zero. So the five turns into a zero, too. Yep, so it's 100. So this 100 is a one sig fig number. Oops, you can't really see it. There you go. Uh, we, have to, uh, we also have to account for our units, so don't forget our units. We have m over s. It's like multiplying fractions. m over s times s. Now, when you multiply fractions, uh, the strategy is to put a 1 underneath the solo, the solo unit. So then you can multiply numerator times denominator, denominator times denominator. And you can see how, how the s's cancel out. Pew, pew. And you have m over 1, which is just m. Hmm. If you're really thinking about what you're doing, right? Remember how we're talking about critical thinking skills, right? If you're really thinking about what you're doing, you would analyze what this unit tells you we said m over s is speed. Then you would analyze what this unit tells you, s by itself. What does that measure? Chat. Time. Very good. And then to take it to the next level on your critical thinking skills, you would then think, OK, what did I actually multiply? I multiplied a speed and a time. So speed tells me how fast I'm going. Time tells me how long I'm going for. And when I multiply those two out, what do you get? How much distance? Thumbs up. But anyway, that's okay. We'll we'll get to that point. So don't worry if that caught you off guard. <laughs> it's just uh, I'm just telling you, you know, uh, you know, these are the types of things. These are the types of you know uh, things that should go through your mind um, as you're doing stuff. Mr. Zahir, where did you get 100? Um, good question. Again, I multiplied five times 25. I got 125, and then I had to round my number uh, based on the significant digits. Um, since my problem, remember the problem had a five and a 25, the least amount of significant digits in this problem is a one, uh, sorry, one sig fig, the five was a one sig fig. That tells me that when I answer this question, I need to make sure that the final answer has just one sig fig. So therefore I had to round the 125 down. I start from left to right, from 100, uh, from the 1, and the 2 tells me to round down. So rounding down means turn all the other numbers into zeros. So the 2 turns into a 0, the 5 turns into a 0, I get 100. So 125 rounded down turns into 100. What if it was, what if it was um, 165 or something? How do you round this to 1 sig fig? Correct. It would be 200. You would round up because the 6 tells you to round up. This would turn into 200. Now it's a 1 sig fig number. Good. All right. Um, let's. Uh, uh, I'm going to mute myself. I'm going to activate class flow. And similar to last time, I, I want two answers. Two answers for the next two. Um, so just use a comma to separate them. So. Let me find it. Oops, do I even have it? Oh, there it is. So text entry. So now you should see it on Classflow. Go ahead and answer the first one and then comma the second one.
Always drink water. Make sure you're hydrated. You should keep a water bottle next to you. Definitely helpful. Uh, units needed. Yes. Good question. Units are needed. So remember, you can't just multiply the numbers, so you can't just do 65.3 times 7.6. Uh, this would be too much, right? We have to round. We have to round our answers. So you would have to go back to the original problem, look at the numbers, okay, and then choose the one that has the least amount of sig figs. Um, of course, 65, oops, 65.3 has three sig figs. Um, 77.6 has, has two sig figs. Uh, I'm getting some answers. Very good. So uh, based on the numbers in the problem, based on the numbers in the problem, I should have my final answer with two sig figs, but I have to round. Ah. One, two. The six tells me, oh, I'm getting some participation. All right. Uh, getting all sorts of answers. Still waiting for like 30 people. Yikes. And if you can't do the uh, if you can't do the units, that's okay. Just at least put the uh, put the numbers in, so I know you're you're there, and you didn't you know turn your brain off and just so uh, you know even if you can do the numbers for now, that's fine. So at least put the numbers numbers in. And we'll do the and we'll do the units together. Mm -hmm. 20 more people. So so this 496.28, that's way too many sig figs. I need to round it down to two sig figs. Uh, <laughs> and then, so we start from left to right. Uh, Darlene, uh, with what to do or what to look at? Like, can you, can you, can you be more specific with your question, Darlene? Well, let's just let's just walk through the third one, shall we? Um, so notice how we have 496.28, but I need to round it to two sig figs because that's the uh, that's the least amount of sig figs in the problem, right? So that's the uh, that's kind of like the rule. Uh, it's based on the least accurate measurement tool. Um, so we start from left to right. So the four, that's one, nine, that's two. Then I look at the next one over, six. Six tells me to round up. But if I round up, then nine turns into a 10, and then the 10 makes the four into a five, so I get 500. But 500 is only a one sig fig number. It's not a two sig fig number. So how can I make 500 into a two sig fig number? Hmm, is there a... A quick little backup strategy that we could do to just make it two sig figs, two sig figs. The underline, yes. So if I were to underline this, the first zero, uh, the first zero, this would make the first zero um, significant, and then, and then that would be two. Okay. I can't do the dot method. The dot is like underlining the last zero. If I did 500 dot, that would make all the zeros count because of sandwich rule, and that would make it three sig figs. All right. So no dots, or or the other way to get around this underlying thing is to just write the answer in scientific notation, uh, and we will cover scientific notation later on. But for those of you who know already from from years past, you know how would you write this in scientific notation? It would be um, five point zero times times 10 to the second power. Uh, so uh, on Classflow, people just literally typed it up. They put 500, but 
with a line under the first zero, so you can always type it up that way. Um, or do and now let's talk about the units. Let's talk about the units. What do I do for the units? Well, similarly, whatever operation you're doing for the number, you have to do it for the units. So this is G times ML. And if you have different units, all you have to do is put them together. You put them together. So G times ML is just GML. Gimel. <laughs> now, is this a real unit? Uh, not really. It's a non-physical quantity. It could exist in a different universe, but not ours. Um, and then let's let's finish it off with the last one. The last one is a division. So again, you would divide. Let's write it down. This is 500 GML. Um, so let's do the last one. The last one is 3.4 divided by 153. Um, no, the slash is different. So the slash is different. You don't want to do the slash. You want to do the dot is like multiplication, right? It's, um, or you can just write it right next to it. You don't have. But uh, for convention, typically we see the dot. It's to signify that, or to symbolize that it is a multiplication. Slash means division. So that's what we're going to do for the second one. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, so, so when I divide, I get a bunch of numbers and it repeats. So that's like way too many sig figs there. So what do I do? Again, go back to the problem. How many sig figs should it be? This, this 0.0. .0. Two, 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 two. How many sig figs should it be? Well, based on the values, what were the values? The values were 3.4 and 150, uh, 1. Uh, 153. So the smallest sig fig is two sig figs. So I have to round it to two sig figs, right? Let's take a look. Number 3.4. Yikes, we have people doing gardening stuff outside. <laughs> Sorry if you can hear that. I <laughs> can't do anything about it. Uh, <laughs> so 3.4, uh, what am I doing? I'm doing 3.4, oh my gosh. As you can see, we have to choose the uh, the two sig figs. We have to round, so, um, so that's that zero does not count. This zero does not count, but this one that's one. This one that's two, and then the next one over that's, you know, and that tells me to round down. Um, I don't want to keep adding zeros because if I keep adding zeros, this would uh, make them all significant, right? These zeros. If I put zeros after this second two then those zeros would count because there's a decimal point and they come after a non-zero number. So therefore, the final answer should be 0 0.022. Now, what do we do with the unit? Yes, just like uh, the operation, the operation was division. So we're going to divide the unit. So it would be G slash ML. Mm. Mm. All right. Luckily for us, uh, mo uh, for the most part in your physics equations, you're going to be doing multiplication and division and some other stuff. But ultimately, you're going to use this least number sig significant figures rule uh, when you're doing physics. Uh, we rarely subtract or divide. I will show it to you, but I won't. I won't focus on it too much because um, we don't. It's not very useful for us. But when you do subtract or um, oh, here are the answers. When you do add or subtract. Um, you actually round to the least number of decimal places. So instead of counting sig figs, you count decimal places. Notice how the two is just in the ones place. There's no decimal. 
that means that means that your final answer also has to go up to the ones place, no decimals. So when you subtract 15 minus 2, the answer is um, the answer is 13 only. Okay. So again, uh, I'm not concentrating on this one because you know we're going to do multiple operations at the same time. And when you do multiple operations, we'll stick to the first one that we covered, which is least amount of sig figs. Are we ever going to have? Uh, are we ever going to have to convert units? Yes. Um, by the way, uh, uh, Daniel, you can take a look at our calendar file. The calendar file will tell you what we're covering every day, and 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 you can also go to our website early or the notes section early, and all the all the notes are there, so you can always um, uh, get a heads up on stuff if you want. That is all right. So again, um, for at uh, multiplication and division. You know, use least amount of sig figs. OK, all right, so. Rule for scientific notation, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm not going to talk about this because we will actually cover scientific notation a different day. Uh, this is a good time to kind of stop with notes and 